Hi, I'm Chet Marchwinski, Communications Director at the nonprofit Lean Enterprise Institute. Today my guest is Howard Kincaid. Howard is manager of the products management group at Gas Compressor Business for Solar, solar Turbines, a unit of Caterpillar. Since taking the post, he has led a cultural transformation in engineering, including a transition from the traditional push and chase culture of uh, managing workflow to a true pull system. He has 35 years of engineering and product development leadership, including extensive applications of traditional and innovative lean product development methods. That experience includes engineering analysis, design engineering, test engineering, NPI leader, project engineering, and project manager, among other posts. Howard, thanks a lot for taking the, the time to come in and talk to us about lean product development. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell, let's start at the, the beginning. What was the business problem uh, solar uh, turbines was addressing with lean product and process development? That's an interesting question. So like I think many organizations, our lean journey actually started in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but about a little over 10 years ago, I was working in the uh, product development group under a new director. He had recognized that uh, our MPI process, new product industrial process, was excellent. It produces great results. But every once in a while, it fell short in some areas, maybe mm -hmm. with schedule, maybe with some of our expenditures, cost management, things of that nature. And he asked the question, do we want to continue to expand our MPI book and make it any thicker? But we found as the book gets thicker, the performance didn't necessarily improve. <clears throat> so he ventured off. He read Lean Product and Process Development from Bleicher and uh, Morgan. He also read the Ward book and Sobeck on product development. Uh, and that caught his attention. And of course, I had homework. I had to do the same <laughs> reading. So when we went through that and we reflected on it, we asked ourselves the question, do we want to experiment with this? And I certainly said yes. It was pretty exciting to me. <clears throat> so our focus, initial focus, was to focus on velocity. So it was pretty oh, simple. Okay. We didn't take too big of a bite. We focused yeah. on velocity. Um, we connected value stream mapping of recent development programs and uh, started applying tools like Obeya and front loading. And just those simple applications of those tools yielded great results. For example, um, our typical um, engine enhancement program might be, let's say, two years from development to test. We applied these to the next engine enhance program and it accelerated from two years to 17 to 18 months. Oh. So that was kind of, this yeah. works, let's try some more. Okay, and one of the most successful experiments I understand was uh, in workflow management to level the work and improve the value stream flow. Mm -hmm. So what did the team do and what were those results? So that was kind of an offshoot of, we've been on the journey for probably about eight, ten years, and something kept coming up in all of our workshops. And it was consistently, we had problems with our workflow management. And it showed up in value stream mapping, and I think many of the uh, people out there have played with this, it showed up as waiting. Our flows weren't uh -oh. synchronized. Um, most of the desks and the work groups were overwhelmed, and we said we need to do something about a workflow management. <clears throat> so we borrowed from a trick that the manufacturing used called Kanban, so mm -hmm. a whole system. Yeah. And we identified that in order for us to get better and actually be able to enable more lean activities, we needed to get our workflow management under control. So we applied lean and Kanban uh, pull systems to the uh, workplace. Great results so far. Great. How about, uh, can you tell us about an experiment that maybe didn't go so well and what, more importantly, what you learned? Uh, well, most of the experiments, if not all of them, have been uh, wildly successful, but there's always something we learn through sure. those experiments. <clears throat> and I can think of one right now that we struggle with a long time, is in our workflow management system, and, and I always ask this question, if you prioritize half the work, how much work have you prioritized? <clears throat> and some people say none of it, and that's what I used to say, and uh, someone gave me a witty answer once and said, you've prior prioritized half of it, but the lower half. And so our goal was to create a prioritization system where we didn't prioritize part of work, we prioritized all of work, it didn't matter what it was, and we'd be able to prioritize across the different um, uh, types of work. So our prioritization system had to be quite extensive to yeah. deal with lots of different business needs. And we kept finding one problem, is our training. Oh, really? training. When we put the training efforts into the prioritization system, they were always at the bottom. And we go, well, this isn't right. We know this isn't right. Yeah. So we kept playing with the algorithm, but every time we changed the algorithm, we'd create some other problems. And then we finally took a step back and said, we're doing training wrong. 
we know training is healthy for business and we need to invest in it. Let's determine what percentage of our investment should be always go to training. So we set aside a training um, bucket and we allow each of the managers to spend that portion of it that's theirs to be able to develop their tools, processes, and people. So they can, they can go ahead and create cards for training and pull them in, assuming the whip cap's there, as long as they don't exceed the budget. So this allows them to manage their development of their people and it, it solved one of our biggest problems in prioritization. Yeah, sounds like a good solution. Was, yeah, yeah, very good. Took a while to figure that out. How about now you're mm -hmm. working differently with lean product and process development. Has this changed the uh, behaviors, the way uh, people manage and lead? That's an interesting question. If you'd asked me that question five, ten years ago, um, the tools almost mechanistically yield results. <clears throat> you don't necessarily have the, the thinking and the behaviors have to change. You could mechanistically use the tools and oh, get okay. results. <clears throat> what I found though, and we did a reflection event on reflection events, what I found after three or four years, a lot of these process improvements disappeared. And we uh, started asking ourselves uh, the question, well, why are these things disappearing? And we realized that we didn't have the cultural values and the behaviors and yeah. thinkings in order to sustain the gains. And so the tools taught me that. I was able to reflect, and it took a while. Um, but the real, the real aha moment was it's not the tools, and we always say that. Everyone mm -hmm. says that. Right. Everyone nods their head up and down. <clears throat> it's not the tools. But sometimes you have to use the tools to go on the learning journey. So what has happened there, and a great opportunity in the last couple of years in gas compressor engineering, a new director of gas compressor engineering, decided that he wanted to focus on the culture first. So he works on what are, the, what are the behaviors and the values and the cultural statement that we want to lead by. And we talk about how they are different than the values that we have behaved before. Mm -hmm. So this focus on cultural values and behaviors has now enabled the tools to be more successful. So I, I would say the tools help with the learning, um, but they don't change your culture. Your culture needs to change, and then the tools become mm. highly effective. But it's an interesting journey how you get there. Yeah, very interesting. That's a good point, Howard. Thanks a lot for coming in and uh, sharing your lean journey at uh, Solar with us. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Uh, to learn more about how you can apply lean development, go to leanpd.org and sign up for the monthly newsletter from Jim Morgan on how companies are applying lean development. And also make plans to join us June 27th and 28th, 2019 at the second annual Designing the Future Summit. Uh, we did the first one last year. The content and enthusiasm was great. People were asking uh, to do it again. So we're going to do it. That's June 27th and 28th, 2019. You can sign up at lean.org right slash design future 2019. Once again, go to lean.org design future 2019 and check out the real, real world topics that we'll be addressing in the agenda.